today we're going to discuss uh, an issue with the FX Wildcat. Uh, the air, the, sometimes you see there's like some moisture or some, you know, air coming out from from the uh, hole in on this side um, when you fill in the in the PCB overnight uh, or like after, in a few hours. You see the PCP has lost a lot of pressure uh, and uh, if it's not from here or from here if you cannot see any leakage from here then this is the most common one is is the leakage from the hole uh, on the cylinder in here where which is the breathe hole for the um, uh, regulator so if you see uh, air coming from here that means the o-rings that are on the tube side of, of uh, the regulator uh, are leaking can be from the small one as well but the main culprit most of the time is the main two o-rings on each side of uh, the hole for that we'll have to open the wildcat up and uh, change those o-rings or clean them up and put put them back together depending on the condition so let's open the fxn wildcat Opening the FX file cat is very easy and there is a screw here and one screw in the back. So once we remove them, uh, we will uh, remove the stock and then we'll be uh, on the gun itself. So let us me let me open that and then continue from there. It uses a 3mm uh, Allen key. So I'm going to open this one using that uh, and uh, proceed from there. As you can see, I've removed the stock. The next step I have to do is open this brass uh, screw, gr uh, grub screw, and um, or bleed bleed uh, valve, whatever you want to call it, and uh, drain, uh, bleed all the air out of the cylinder because the cylinder is still compressed. So we just slightly use it till we start hearing the air go out, and then we just let the air bleed out of the system till it's completely empty. While it's bleeding, I normally like to uh, put a tape around this point to mark how deep the cylinder, uh, cylinder is, where this, this and this thing come on the cylinder. So if I mark it, I would know exactly uh, which place uh, this is supposed to be tightened at. So my trigger remains exactly the same and also my uh, probe does not uh, you know, leave its original place and uh, there's no change in my velocity on, on my PCB. So as you can see the air has stopped bleeding from here and I have put a tape here um, before I loosen the screws on the other side all these four of the screws uh, these ones and these ones and then I can remove this cylinder out. Just to confirm all the air has uh, left the system I've removed it and see there is still slight amount of air here uh, if I did not remove it, I would not know that there is still air uh, left in the system. And you can check the slight, still slight air coming out from here. You can't hear it, but you know, if I block the pathway, I can uh, hear the hear the air coming out. The gauges were showing almost nil air, but there is still there was still air in here. Now uh, it is completely empty. I can put this back in so I don't forget uh, when I'm uh, refilling the air that I have not placed this. And it has happened to me before, so I'm just going to tighten this completely as it's supposed to be. And that's it. Now this is tight enough and uh, we can open the gun as you can see i've loosened these uh, a little bit and now i can check it this is moving forward and behind and this is what i mean that you know you should, you should mark the location because if it is not the same location you can see your trigger position and your probe tension uh, changes uh, with where with respect to where uh, you tighten this so if you tighten it too too backward your probe will be like you know uh, loose or too too um, too loose or too tight depending on how which direction you move it in and similarly your trigger will also 
uh, be um, will change position depending on where and you may even stop uh, may not be even able to cock the gun if you move it uh, too much in either direction after this I, all I need to do is just rotate the cylinder see it easily opens up and I can pull it out once it's open so the cylinder is now out and uh, I can uh, this is the hole from which the air was coming out so I'm going to uh, take out the regulator and replace the seals of this because I'm opening this I'm also going to change the seal on in on this side of the uh, cylinder as well as the one inside here and clean everything up if there's any moisture or anything like that If you see inside the tube that is the regulator so I'll have to uh, use some si sort of a, a long tube or any plastic rod or something like that to push the regulator out so it comes from this side uh, so I can service that yeah there is some residue in there that I need to clean As you can see it in the video right where the hole is around there there is some residue that is because uh, the regulator was sitting there and any moisture dried up there and that's what's causing it so I have cleaned it you can see uh, it's clean now and shiny that's how it's supposed to be this is the Huma regulator rebuild kit whenever you order a Huma regulator for your gun make sure you order one or two of these uh, because you know over time uh, it's easier when there's an issue you don't have to wait and you know order and wait for the order to be delivered and you can just start uh, you know just replace the o-rings or the del ring inside and have the regulator working like new again so I always order one uh, kit or two kits with my any regs that I order for Huma here if you take a, take a close look on the regulator itself you can see that there are Korean salts formed right there and when I op I'm sure when I open the o-ring up there are going to be salts underneath uh, the, the o-ring as well and that is what is causing uh, the um, leakage so once I clean it I have to make sure it's polished and there is like no rough surface there and uh, then I, I can reseal it this happened because uh, I was not careful uh, when I uh, filled my gun to make sure there was no moisture going in so I did not have a good enough filter before uh, on my uh, compressor since now I have a good good uh, filter I don't I won't get this issue again not at least not this soon this is after about one and a half year of usage it's still not as bad as it's, uh, I've seen in some cases but it's still there and you can avoid this by using a good uh, filter air, air filter these are both the o-rings that I've removed uh, they're not that deformed as I was uh, suspecting before. I'm still going to replace them But I'm just showing you that they're not that deformed. It is the salts uh, that are formed or with moisture That are causing the leak uh, as you can see right there You can see all that that is all Salt and corrosion from moisture that were formed inside. I have to carefully clean and polish it now And after that is done. I, I can put the o-rings back on put some lube uh, again and then reseal it I have to very carefully remove this without scratching the sealing surface so you have to be very careful when you do that don't scratch the inside if you do that then your rag will be wasted it will be very difficult to reseal it if you get get scratches on there there is specific uh, type of uh, cleaners that you can use um, and that's what you should clean them with and those chemicals will get rid of this oxidation much better than uh, anything else uh, don't polish it with sandpaper don't use mm -hmm. any metal metallic items 
so I have cleaned most of the surface and gotten rid of all those uh, salt marks and like all the oxidation marks and uh, I'm going to polish it slightly more than I'm going to that um, with the polishing paper I'm going to polish it and then I'm going to uh, it doesn't take off any any material from it or put any scratches on it just smooths out everything so I'm going to use that and then I'm going to put the o-rings back in here are the new o-rings these are the old ones so I'm going to put these new ones on with some silicone grease on it I installed the new o-rings and I put some generous amount of lube on, on it that's um, silicone lube and uh, the other uh, thing I'm going to do is I'm, after I put this in I'm going to uh, clean uh, the plenum area so there's no extra lube in there if you see there's a hole in here and a hole in there I'm going to turn it 90 degrees like this and then install it if you see now I'm just putting this in and I'm just going to press it until the o-ring is in and then just turn it and tighten it till it's fully tight just take the long nose plier and just softly give the final twist that's it uh, there's no gap in here and we're good I have installed a new o-ring here uh, if you have any issues uh, when you're filling air and you know the air leaks out from here then you can open this and clean up and uh, service this as well most of the time you won't need to uh, unless you have like really a lot of like huge amount of moisture in your you can then you just use a 5 mil allen key to open this and clean uh, inside and uh, replace the components if required I'm not going to do it because um, I just did that uh, about a year ago and I don't need to replace I just checked they are perfectly fine right now now you just push this back in so the o-ring clears the thread and just screw that back in slight power at the uh, is required at the end to um, make sure the thread is completely tightened but don't over tighten it after this is done then you just need to screw the cylinder back in make sure you put some uh, lube on it and see if this o-ring needs to be placed some of them ha will have that um, o-ring with the metallic part in there but this one ha came with this, this sort of o-ring and there's no issue here I've checked but uh, it's always a good idea to replace the o-rings once you open uh, a gun you don't need to reopen it 20 times just replace all the o-rings that you have uh, make sure uh, if you re replace them uh, once uh, you're servicing if it is once a year or something just replace the o-rings it'll be easier for you uh, uh, not having issues with the gun later at this this point I just drop the cylinder in and screw it with the hand once you screwed this in completely make sure that you know it doesn't turn anymore just with your hand don't over torque it not required okay so after I push up uh, hand tighten this uh, all the way in I make sure I align these uh, to the uh, tape I marked so everything is aligned, the trigger is in the same place everything else is uh, exactly as it was before so nothing is going to change I'll have the same velocity I'll have same everything just have to make sure the leak is not there and I'm good to go just tighten these enough uh, don't break them but make sure they're tight enough don't over tighten them because this is a soft metal and it's going to break if you over tighten it this screw will cut right through it if you over tight but see I'm not putting too much power and that's it I can remove the tape now or uh, if I want I can actually cut the top portion of the tape and leave the bottom on or I can just uh, remove it and do it next time again uh, this is a good marker to make sure I, I have the trigger and everything in the right place now I have the gun assembled I'm going to put air inside and see if it leaks then I'm going to re uh, put the stop back on afterwards since I put the uh, loop on all the threads this one and this one um, I put this silicone loop in there I put this one um, gun oil over there 
and I've screwed screwed them in and if there's any leakage from these o-rings this one this one or the regulator one I I've replaced I'll see some um, silicon oil in the morning to, um, coming out from here since this is just uh, one drop uh, I don't need to uh, open it up and clean it again because uh, um, it's just going to stay there on the thread unless there's a leakage the thing I do is I have put some o-rings on my uh, studs that uh, um, screw my stock in uh, the reason is that they don't vibrate inside the stock and I got a little better harmonics off, out of the gun just by doing this see these are the only two contact uh, uh, points with the gun and uh, the stock uh, so this sort of uh, removes that vibration from it that's at least that's what I've seen